hi and welcome to a short podcasting editing tutorial where I'm going to show you how I edit my podcasts and hopefully this will help you find the courage and learn a few tips and tricks to get you started on your journey to editing your own podcast. So the first thing you want to do is launch your editing software. So I use Adobe Audition. That's part of the Adobe suite. That's also because I use Adobe Premiere for my videos that I have on my YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Mark Roost. And also use Photoshop for my thumbnails on my social media, on my videos, and for my podcasts and their guests and so forth. So I actually use a lot of the Adobe suite, but it's quite pricey and you got to pay per month unless you're a student. It's really expensive. So you may want to go for the free version, which is Audacity, which is by far one of the most used editing software out there. So I'm going to show you what I do on Audition, but it's very much the same system and principles on Audition or Audacity. Um, in fact, Audition is a little bit more complex, but I'm going to make it quite simple to show you what I do, because really what I do with my podcast is very, very simple. So the first thing you want to do is actually it may sound weird, but you want to make sure that all your settings are in order. So I go in Preferences audio hardware, and you want to make sure that, for example, if you're using an external microphone, which I suggest, so I'm using an external Yeti microphone, you see, you're going to make sure that it's plugged in and that it has Yeti stereo microphone. Sometimes I'll go in and I've forgotten and it's in built in and I'll record a whole episode of a podcast and it sounds awful because it sounds like I'm recording from a massive distance in a hallway. So you're going to go back in here and just 48,000. Okay. So now that you have your editing software open, um, I'm going to import my pre-recorded podcasting editing tutorial so that I can show you. It's a very short recording, but it's very much what I would do in real time. So I've actually gone ahead and made purposefully a few mistakes. So as you can see, there are a few blanks here. So usually when I see a blank, that means that I've made a mistake or I was trying to think of something or maybe I forgot a note that I wanted to make. So I'm going to go ahead and listen to this and hopefully you can you can listen to it. Hi, so I'm going to do a little hi and welcome to the Unconventionalist podcast. My name is Mark Roost and so hopefully you heard that. If you didn't, basically I started off the show and I kind of on purpose kind of stopped and hesitated and made a mistake. So what I would normally do, I would zoom in just using the two fingers on my on my digital board or my trackpad, sorry, on my MacBook and I would just select. So you click on it and I drag and as you can see, it selected the audio wave that's white, and you can see also at the top, this is the mass of the entire track. And all I'm going to do is literally press delete, and that's it. Welcome to the Unconventionalist Podcast, the show about what it takes to find work you love. So that's my intro. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's much better than before. I'm your host, Mark DeRoost, and today we're going to do a really quick podcasting editing tutorial. So I'm going to make little noises and sounds on purpose to show you what I would do in post-edit in the production process to get rid of words like um, <sighs> those kind of... So, hopefully you heard that. But basically, those are very similar sounds that I would expect to hear during an interview. Sometimes a guest might burp. Sometimes I might keep on saying like... Um, uh, you know, like... Um, all those are not actually that great when you listen back on a podcast. So you want to delete those. So you wouldn't necessarily recognize them from just looking at the sound wave. So you would have to listen to the entire podcast again if you're doing this yourself, i.e. if you're not using a podcast producer or an editor. So I'm just going to go back and show you where the sounds were. Um, and if I wanted to delete those, I would go back to what I selected here and I would just press delete. Okay. But I'm not going to do that because I want to make sure that you get also to hear that. So you probably hear them a lot. Or if I said something, oh, I made a mistake. But if I want to say something so I can show you what it looks like when you erase, maybe even to have a long pause. Okay, so you saw that that was like a long pause, right? So sometimes it'll happen that a guest will be like, I'll ask a question, maybe a tough question, and the guest will take a few seconds and sometimes a really long time to answer. Now, obviously, when you're in person, that works. But when you're listening to a podcast, you can sometimes feel like the sound's busted or there's a problem with the recording. So I actually always shorten that amount of time. Now, I don't make it really short. I do try and have a little bit dramatic effect. But for this particular occasion, we're just going to delete go that pause. and erase that. So That's no pretty much yeah. what I do when I edit a podcast, add some music, make sure I get rid of all the... Um, mm, 
or those kind of sounds and get rid of the gaps. Hope that's helpful. Now go out there and start your own podcast and start spreading your message. Okay, so for example, at the end here, we don't need to get that blank. I'm going to get rid of that. Often when I record, I don't actually realize how the volume can be quite low. So when I export it and people actually have reached out to me, um, there's a listener, a guy called Bartek or Diaz, that was the one that made me realize. He was like, hey, dude, like I'm listening to this in the tube and I can't really hear it very well. So one of the things that I recommend you do is that you put control A so that you control, you basically select the entire track. Now you can do this a couple of ways. You can either use here, as you can see, there's like a little kind of wheel and there's two little arrows that point to the left and to the right. If you click on that, you can reduce the sound or you can increase it. Can you see how the audio waves are going smaller and higher? So this you don't want to go too high because that's going to saturate it. Okay, so you can do this manually. But I'm going to show you another way. Again, control A, go in effects, amplitude and compression, multiband compressor. And if it's not already selected, go in broadcast and click apply. This may take a little while if you've got a longer track. Okay, sometimes it takes a couple of minutes, but what it does, welcome to the unconventionalist podcast, the show, can you hear the difference? Hopefully you can. It's, it's louder. That's what it is. So now what I'm going to do is, now that I've got this track, let's say I recorded my uh, solo round of a podcast, or maybe I've done this for a guest interview that I wanted to edit. The next step I want to do is add a multi-track session. Okay, so we're going to call it uh, podcast editing tutorial v1 for example if you want to call it that way okay and then all i'm doing is i'm dragging and dropping the podcast interview that i prepared so you can hear it here welcome to the unconventionalist podcast the show about what it takes okay so you've heard that now right so what i want to do is maybe i want to add a little bit of music to start off the show and maybe i want to get some music to exit the show so all i do is you've got a few ways you can go and file open and then you can go and find that there. But what I prefer doing is just drag and dropping. So I prepared it here. I get the intro jingle. And I'm also going to drag and drop the outro jingle. Just so that it's ready. Okay, so I want to put the intro jingle. I drag and I dropped it in a separate layer. Can you see how there are two different layers? If I dropped it here, it would override the song on the, on the front. Think about it as swimming lanes. Okay, so if you all had different swimming lanes for each an audio track, that enables everybody to swim at the same time. So I'm going to drop that there. It's just basically telling me that it hasn't got the same settings as the primary audio. So I'm just going to drop that there. So as you can see, I'm going to start. It might hurt the ears, but I'm just going to show it to you. Welcome to the Unconventionalist podcast, the show about the sound of the audio is way too high. So what you want to do is you just want to click on it. Can you see how that changed? It went from like a little kind of weird triangle thingy, squarey thing. I don't know what you call them. When I click on it, I drag it down. Minus 15, minus 16 is usually quite good, but we're going to test it. Welcome to the Unconventionalist Podcast, the show about what it takes to find work you love. I'm kind of happy with that. But what I want to do is, can you see how the audio wave here is kind of slow and then it gets quite high? I'm going to show you why it picks up. Sounds on purpose to show you what I would do in post-edit and the production. So what I want to do is, I want to make sure that my track of my podcast episode kicks in at the same time as the main audio of the song. There's two ways you can do about this, okay? So the, the, like, the simple one is you take this and you just drag it approximately where it starts. Let's give it a go. Welcome to the Unconventionalist Podcast. Yeah, pretty happy with that. I'm just gonna put this down a little bit lower just because I think it's a little bit too loud. Oops, sorry. That... Hmm, I know what happened and I'll explain to you this in a second. So you see how you've got a square there? Drag it down. Maybe 2026. 20, Let's see what that sounds like. Welcome to the Unconventionalist Podcast, the show about what it takes. That works. Okay, so you don't want to have 15 seconds of intro music before you kick off your podcast. That's really, really long. So what I would do is I would have probably about five seconds, if that. Okay, we're just going to see what that sounds like. Welcome to the Unconventionalist Podcast. But now you want to have a bit of a dramatic effect. You don't want to just start off on this kind of soundtrack that doesn't really feel like it's supposed to start there. Welcome to the Unconventionalist Podcast. Did you hear that? So what I do is, you want to zoom in a little bit by using the trackpad. I just, like if you were going to zoom in for a photo on your, on, on your iPhone or on your phone. And here's where it gets really, really exciting, but it's very easy. So look at the arrow and you see how you've got a little cross at the bottom. 
When I press command on my keyboard, can you see there's a little pen? When I'm on the line? Yeah. So I'm going to press command, there's a little pen, and I'm going to make a dot here. It's just basically a marker. And I'm going to make another one right about where the music kicks off. And all I'm telling the track is I'm going to click again, not using command, and I'm dragging it down. Can you see how it just changed levels? So what I'm telling the audio track simply is you're going to fade in. Welcome to the Unconventionalist Podcast. The show That's it. That's as simple as it is. And the error I made before was, in fact, instead of just dragging down the entire track to a lower volume, I'd accidentally made a marker. That's why there was a bit of a funky um, process just before. Okay, so now I've got the intro music that I'm quite happy with. By the way, the, now that I'm doing this, I would do Command A or Control A to control the whole track, and I would just drag it all the way to the left. I would just, sometimes you want to zoom in just to make sure that it really is to the left, and it really is now. So, as you can tell, welcome to the Unconventionalist Podcast. That is usually what about, about yeah, between three to five seconds is what I would probably do for a typical intro. But I don't want to have the whole song to play during the entire track, right? You don't want to have that. So, the show about what it takes to find work you love. I'm your host, Mark DeRoost, and today we're going to do a really quick podcasting editing tutorial. So right about there, I've kind of just done my intro jingle. This is the show about what it's really like to find work you love. And then I'm going to go usually into talking about what we're going to be talking about in the episode or what guests I've got on the show. And then I might give a few shout outs to the events I'm running, or maybe I'm launching a new accelerator, or maybe there's a media opportunity that I was in or something like that. And then about here, what I'll do is, again, I'll put command, I'll click, and then I do this very roughly, so you can be way more precise than I am. And then I'll be, okay, about, you know, maybe, yeah, five, ten seconds of fading out. Did exactly the same process. Command, clicked on the song, did it again there, and then clicked on that marker and just dragged it down. And now listen to what it does. So I'm going to make little noises and sounds on purpose to show you what I would do in post-edit in the production process to get rid of words like, um, mm. so did you see how the sound of the music totally disappeared? So what I do is when I'm dragging my mouse towards the end of the track, as you can see, it changes, right? From like a little cross to like a red, weird shape. <laughs> so you basically click and you just drag it and that's it. <gasps> Oop, no, the reason why that happened is because it was still control A, all the tracks. So you want to click on the side, click back on the track that you want to change, put that little red dot and then just drag it all the way back. That's it. So I'm going to make little noises and sounds on purpose to show you what I would do in post edit. There you go. So that's done now. But now I want to add a little outro music. I want to be able, like, be able to leave my podcast episode with some outro music. So I'll go ahead and drag and drop the outro music that I use for all my podcasts. And remember how if you start off, it's really loud. So you can either do this by playing by ear. So as you still play the track, you play the music and then you can just drag it down as you listen. And that's one way that I do it. So I can go, yeah, okay, that, that sounds about right. But the same thing with the previous intro jingle, we don't want to start off at this really weird cut. So what I'm going to do is, again, two markers, click on the first one, drag it down. And then as you can see, the um, mm, all those kind of sounds and get rid of the gaps. Hope that's helpful. Now go out there and start your own podcast and start spreading your message. Yeah, so that's that's quite good. I think we can make it a little bit louder. I'm going to show you something that I do quite often. So when I say my last words on the outro part of my jingle, I'll add a second marker, very close to the one I've done before. And then I go quite high. And you're going to see what happens. Hope that's helpful. Now go out there and start your own podcast and start spreading your message. I just think there's something quite nice about leaving it a bit of higher music. And then very quickly after that, I do another marker and another marker and I just wind it down. And then same thing, I just make sure I've got this track selected only. I go to the red mark, close it there. And there you have it. That's it. That's how I edit podcasts. 
I would do the same system throughout the whole episode just to make sure that everything is cut. And then what you do is I go in File, Export, Multi-Track, Mix Down, Entire Session. So here are a few things you just want to make sure. Click on the first thing at the top. This is where your podcast title is going to come along, okay? So Podcast Editing Tutorial V1. I want to get rid of Mix Down, okay? MP3. So I'm just going to get this down to Podcast Editing Tutorial Live. And then you just want to make sure you click on this if you want to change where the location, desktop, that's fine for me. Format, MP3, that totally works for me. That's what I enjoy. And then these, you can include markers or not. This basically says it's going to keep track of, of what you put as information in the track. And then I put OK. And it's done. That's it. And that's a podcast episode. And then I would use that episode directly and load it up on my SoundCloud account which would then sync up to iTunes. And voila, hope that was helpful. If you've got any questions following up this edit, make sure to send me a tweet at Mark Roost over on Twitter. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to the Unconventionalist podcast over on iTunes. If you want to find out more about the show, just go to theunconventionalists.com. Thank you.